special day because not only is it Earth Day, but it is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Can you really guess? So it's 2020. So when was the first Earth Day? I'm telling you, I'm starting you off with a challenging question here. I think 2020 minus 50. I think that makes it 1970. Anyways, we can come back to that and check my math, but I want to introduce myself. My name is Sarah. I'm the program director with Farrington NatureLink. We are a nonprofit based in Lincoln, Mass., and working with the greater Boston community. And our mission is to enhance the lives of children from low-income communities through a relationship with the natural world. We're really focused on health and well-being and how a relationship with nature can make you feel good, can relieve stress and anxiety. I think we could all use a little bit of that right now. Um, whether you're interacting with nature from the comfort of your home, even if you live in the city like I do, or if you're able to get out into the woods at somewhere like Farrington over in Lincoln. Uh, today, I am joining you all from my apartment here in West Roxbury, which is a neighborhood of Boston. And um, our topic today is all about how you can make a difference for planet Earth on Earth Day. I think this is a really relevant topic. I'm so glad I get to talk with you all about it today because we know that especially in the past year, um, the topic of climate change has really been coming up in conversations. There's been marches. People are starting to learn about it more in school, talk about it more at home and at work. Um, so even though Earth Day has been happening every year since 1970, it feels really appropriate that the 50th anniversary is this year, right? Um, because coronavirus pandemic is going on right now, that kind of adds an additional layer, right? Like, what's the connection between coronavirus and climate change or between what's going on in the environment and coronavirus? Um, how can you make a difference for the environment even though you're stuck at home and you're trying to, you know, do social distancing because of coronavirus? These are all really big questions. We are going to be um, talking about some answers to those types of questions, talking a little bit about what you can do, we are going to be doing a little bit of a demo of a recycled art project that I thought would be a cool idea to do a little bit of activism from my own home. Maybe it's something that you could do at home, kind of something similar, or maybe you have another idea. Before we dive too much into that, um, I wanted to acknowledge that indigenous people around the world have been the stewards or the, the people who are taking care of our earth forever, right, since humans have been around. And um, here in Massachusetts, there are still many different types of indigenous groups. So indigenous is just another word for Native American, if you've heard the phrase Native American. So um, over in Lincoln, where Farrington is located, we're not there right now, but um, the Massachusetts people are an indigenous group that our state is actually named after, and they didn't have any um, kind of like permanent homes in the Lincoln area, um, we don't think, but they did often kind of come through Lincoln to um, hunt and fish and look for, you know, plants that they could eat and whatnot. And um, besides the Massachusetts people, the Wampanoag people are a Native American group that um, still have a really awesome presence in the eastern part of Massachusetts, which is where, like, um, Boston and Cape Cod are located. So just wanted to kind of throw that out there. I think it's really important to acknowledge or think and talk about where we are every day and especially on Earth Day. Um, awesome. So, you know, sometimes when I think about um, the environment and saving the planet and Earth Day, you know, especially when I was younger and before I learned a lot about the environment, um, it was a little overwhelming, huh? It's like it feels like there's so many problems going on with the earth and like what can you do to help especially if you're a kid right um and so i wanted to think of a few examples i have a few ideas just to kind of get the juices flowing but i didn't know if anybody wanted to um write a comment or let me know what are some environmental issues that you really care about what are some things that you think are either problems that we need to change or solutions, good things that we already know about that we should be doing more of. Don't forget that um, 
Meg, our program manager at Farrington, is looking at the comments on Facebook. Um, and she, I have her in one of my earbuds, and she'll be letting me know what your questions or comments are if you leave anything on Facebook. So I will see that. Yeah. Yeah. So Meg's coming in here with a question for me, which you probably couldn't hear. Thank you so much, Meg. So her, um, her comment was that she feels really strongly about this thing called access to the outdoors. Access is kind of like, um, how easy or how hard it is for you to get somewhere or something, right? So in this case, she was talking about access to the outdoors. So especially um, if you live here in the city like I do, what are some places where I can go to get outdoors and how easy or how hard it is, is it for me to do that, right? So, um, you know, for me, even though I'm here in Boston, I'm actually, I feel really lucky because there's a park down the street. There's this awesome, gigantic um place it's kind of like a park called the Arnold Arboretum and I have a car so um, even though the Arboretum is a mile away from here if I didn't feel like walking there I could take my car and drive there right and I'm also really lucky because I only have to work one job and I don't have any kids to take care of so I got plenty of free time to go to places like the Arboretum or go to the park I could even drive somewhere further away right like the mountains or like Farrington but not everybody has that some people live in an area where, or a lot of people live in an area where um, there are not parks that are safe or really that appealing or clean. Maybe there's a lot of trash around. Maybe they are having to work um, lots of different jobs or take care of kids who are really busy, you don't have a lot of free time to get outside, or maybe they don't even have um, the right clothing or gear to feel like safe and comfortable in the outdoors. Or maybe they just don't feel like it's for them, right? Because um, some people, especially people of color, have been made to feel um, that the outdoors is not for them because of racism, unfortunately. So thank you, Meg. That's a really important question. Anybody else, um, just to get, you know, the juices flowing, do we have any other topics that folks feel like are really valuable to be thinking about in terms of the environment, especially today on Earth Day? Meg's coming in with a comment, yeah. That is awesome. Thanks, Meg. So Meg, let me know that there was a comment coming in um, from Eleanor, who is a kid out, kiddo out there, and she said that, during the quarantine, she is making crafts using recycled materials, and that's how they're helping the planet. So how does that help the planet? I love that that comment came in because that is exactly what we're going to do during our demo later today. Um, so recycled. I think a lot of people have heard that word, but what does it really mean? Hmm. I think it means that you're reusing something either in the same form or maybe in a different form, that has already been used before, right? So I'm um, going to give you an example here. I got some yogurt last week, and they came in these individual little plastic containers. I actually didn't want them to come in individual containers. I like getting them in a giant container. But because we're dealing with coronavirus right now, it's been harder to find the groceries that I want. So I said, okay, I'll just deal with it. I'll get them in individual little containers. So instead of throwing these in the trash, I threw them in my recycling bin, which means that the city of Boston will pick them up and then they'll bring them to a recycling center where hopefully plastic will get turned into something else in the future. Um, instead of actually putting them out in my recycling bin for the city to pick up on trash day, I pulled them out of my recycling bin and I thought that they might make a cool material for our recycled art project today. Um, so I love to hear that Eleanor 
and probably other kids out there are making recycled art. Very cool. So I do want to show you a few um, examples of environmental activism topics that I really care about and thought might be cool to talk about today. I don't know if folks can see this. Should I come a little closer? All right, thank you. My camera person's zooming in here. Um, so pollution of the land, water, and air. Um, pollution is basically getting chemicals that don't belong in the land, water, or air um, into those areas. Food security, that's something I care about too. So we know what food is, but security, kind of like safety or kind of like that access word that we talked about. So food security is like how much or how little are people able to get food that is not only enough for them to eat, but also, um, you know, nutritious and plenty of fruits and vegetables and not just processed food that isn't so good for you and where grocery stores is located. How can people that maybe don't have a lot of money and are living in the city and maybe don't have cars, how can people get the food that's healthy that they need, right? And there are a lot of awesome places working on that. This last one, um, rising temperatures, right? So um, in this conversation we've been having about climate change, maybe some people have heard that um, it's getting hotter out and um, that's changing a lot of things, right? So um, ice in the cold, you know, North Pole, South Pole of our planet is melting, sea levels are rising, it's causing a whole train reaction. Um, so these are some things that I care about and um, also kind of wanted to talk about this next layer, right? So um, the example of making recycled art or making a change in your own home, that's kind of on what I would call the personal level, right? So it has to do with you and your family, like maybe even um, anybody who lives in your household. So I wanted to show you an example of something that I've done in the past year to change what I'm doing on the personal level. So um, at my house, we used to use a lot of plastic wrap in the kitchen, right? Like when we, um, you know, had leftover food or um, if I only ate half of my mango, I might wrap it up in plastic. But in the last year, I said I really want to stop using so much plastic wrap, right? Because plastic wrap goes into the trash, and then that's not good for the environment. It doesn't break down very easily at all. Um, so instead, I've been doing two things. I've been trying to use more um, contain like reusable containers, like this one. So even though this is plastic, um, it's something that I can use over and over and over. I can just wash it and then use it for something else. I don't have to throw it away. If you didn't have um, one of these, like, nice Tupperwares, instead, you could also use some kind of container that you bought something in at the store, right? Um, like this, I think, was from the prepared food section of the grocery store. You know, like, if you go and there's, like, a salad bar or, like, olives or whatever, I just save this and I keep washing it. I also like to get that spreadable butter that comes in a container that kind of looks like this. Those are really good to keep um, and reuse for tons of things, storing food, storing other stuff. Um, I also got these cool um, things called beeswax wraps that are kind of like a piece of fabric um, covered in beeswax. And those are a lot like plastic wrap, except they're way better for the environment. But like I said, if you don't want to buy those, you don't have the money to buy those, no big deal. You got your recycled containers. So that's an example of something that I'm doing on the personal level. So I want to show you three words here. This is just, yeah, what's up, Meg? Yeah, okay, we got a question coming in from Eleanor. Yeah, that is awesome. Why is recycling important? Why should we do it? So. Imagine if, um, using plastic wrap as an, as an example, everybody on planet Earth kept using plastic wrap and throwing in the trash, and they kept throwing all this other stuff in the trash. Nobody was recycling, nobody was composting, if you know what that is. Um, when I take my trash out and I bring it to the end of my 
segue right down there, and the city of Boston picks it up every Monday, they are then bringing it to a place where it's either put into a landfill, which is kind of like um, a giant area where all the trash goes, and then um, eventually it does kind of like um, – get pushed down a little bit or compress a little bit, but you're still taking up a lot of space, right? Some other places, like, burn your trash. Either way, eventually we're going to run out of space for all of that trash, right? Planet Earth is only so big. Um, and there's a lot of other issues too, right? Like when trash is breaking down, it starts to release um, kind of, like, vapors into the air. And by that I mean, like, um, Maybe it's not an exact comparison, but if you were, like, boiling water on the stove, it's releasing steam. So think of, think of a landfill kind of like that. Um, vapors are going into the air that are bad for the environment, and they're actually changing the air and changing the temperatures. Um, but if you recycle, you are putting less into the trash, and instead – you are reusing stuff in new ways, whether you're reusing it in your house um, and keeping it here, or whether you're putting something into the recycling bin and then the city takes it, it goes to recycling facility and it gets melted down and turned into something else that then can have a whole new life. Um, recycling is ultimately gonna help us just not fill up planet Earth with so much stuff and run out of space for all the humans and make our air really hot and yucky. So thank you, Eleanor, for that awesome question. Okay, so we were talking a little bit about um, making a change for planet Earth on the personal level with my example of using less plastic wrap. There's also the local level, and then there's the global level. And this is just kind of my way of thinking about it. You might have your own way of thinking about it. For me, local kind of means like um, – in my neighborhood, in my city, in the state of Massachusetts, um, what are some changes that I can make to try to um, convince other people to change their behavior, um, which means like th just the way that they do things, the way that they live their life. So how can I convince people to recycle more or um, make access to the outdoors better, things like that. And then the global level, what do you think that means? So global like the globe. Um, for me, global is kind of like on the, a really big picture level. So um, like in the whole United States or in all of North America or in the whole world. And you might be thinking, if I'm just your average person or especially if I'm a kid, how on earth can I make a difference on the local level, never mind on the global level in the whole world? But believe it or not, you can. Um, we are going to focus – Let's see. We're doing okay for time. We're going to focus mainly on the local level with our recycled art project. But um, on the global level, I do want to let you know that there are all kinds of things that you can do. There are awesome um, nonprofit organizations like Farrington out there that are working to improve the environment in Massachusetts, in the whole United States, around the world, and you can help them. Um, this is something that's great for a parent or an adult or a teacher to help you with. If you're a kid out there and you want to help planet Earth, ask them for advice. You can say, hey, do you know any organizations that are doing stuff that I can help with? Or um, do you know any politicians, maybe it is the mayor of your city or the governor of Massachusetts um, or even the president of the United States? Do you know any politicians who um, I might be able to call or write a letter to or write an email to with a parent's um, permission and support, of course. Um, can I write them a letter about something that I want to make a difference with, right? You can totally do that, especially with help from an adult. Um, if you find any organizations in your own city or in your own state um, that are doing awesome stuff, you can help them by following them on Facebook or Instagram if you use those maybe asking a parent or an adult to sign up to get their email so that when they're trying to do stuff and they need help, um, you know, and you can either um, write a letter if they ask you to, maybe they need volunteers and you can go volunteer. Kids can totally go volunteer. Or you could ask your teacher, hey, can you take our class to go out and volunteer? When it's okay, when social distancing is over, of course. Um, 
So there are tons of things that you can do. I want to give a shout out to one organization that I think is a really cool example called Green Roots in Chelsea. Um, that's Green Roots. And Chelsea is um, a city that's just a little bit north of Boston. It's right around here. They are doing awesome work in this thing called environmental justice. And if you follow them on Facebook or go on their website or sign up for their emails, they're always telling you about ways that you can get involved and help them. So I love that example because you don't have to know everything, right? You don't have to be an expert. There are all kinds of people out there who are doing awesome things for planet Earth. And if you just kind of um, – it's kind of like having a friend who's an expert on – something that you don't know as much about, right? Maybe you have a friend who's really good at a certain video game that you're not as good at. They're the expert on that. Think of organizations like Green Roads as the experts on the environment. So you just got to ask them for advice. How can I help? All right, cool. So let's get to work on our recycled art project. So um, like with Eleanor's example, this could be something that you're doing to make a difference on the personal level, you know? just reusing something in your own home. Um, in my example here, I was thinking about this as not only personal but also local because I want to make um, kind of a creative sign that I can put on my front door to tell my neighbors or anyone who drives by um, to help take care of, of planet Earth. And specifically what I was thinking is that I want to get people to do less of something called idling their car. Anybody out there who's watching, what the heck is idling your car? I know when I was a kid, I probably didn't know what that meant. <laughs> um, Meg, do you have a guess what is idling your car? I can hear her in my earbud here. Yeah, it's when you're not moving in your car but the car is still running. The car is still on. Thanks, Meg. Um, so I learned a little bit about this issue recently when I went on this really cool um, walking tour called a toxic tour with an organization called ACES here um, in not West Roxbury, but in Roxbury, another part of Boston. And um, over in that area in Roxbury, there's a giant area where all the buses for the city of Boston, um, they – take little breaks or they, they kind of wait over in that area called a bus depot. Um, and they don't always turn their engines off when they're there. So they're, they're, in that case, it's a bus and a car. Their buses are idling, meaning that they're putting out all these fumes and this pollution, right, um, because the buses are running on diesel fuel. It's a certain kind of gas going out into the air. And the people who live in that neighborhood especially super close to the bus depot, are having to breathe all that in, and it's really not good for the human body. And that is not fair to those people. Um, so, um, you know, even if you don't live near that bus depot in Raspberry, car idling is a problem everywhere, right? And there's actually laws in certain cities, including Boston, that tell you that you either can't idle your car at all or you can only idle it for five minutes or 15 minutes. But a lot of people don't know about that or they don't follow it, right? So here in my neighborhood, we're lucky. Um, you know, it's, even though it's Boston, it's pretty spread out. Um, there's not a whole lot of idling or inhaling fumes, but there's definitely some of it more than I would like. And um, even if it's not a huge, huge problem here, plenty of people drive by my house and they could still see my sign and it might make a difference somewhere else as well as here. So let's see what I've got here in my art bin. This is a bin where I like to keep all kinds of um, recycled materials over the years. So I got my trusty egg carton, which we used um, yesterday when we did our um, seed planting video. Um, I like to save, like, cool things that I get in the mail if I, because I like to make collages. So sometimes I'll save, like, cool pieces of paper. I've got a piece of cardboard from a box, some kind of delivery that I got. I've got a roll uh, of toilet paper, toilet paper tube. Okay. And I've also got some markers, washable markers. 
and a Sharpie, a permanent marker. Usually you want to ask an adult for permission to use a permanent marker, right? Because they don't come out. So I'm going to move my bin out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. And I was thinking that I might make my sign kind of in the shape of like a flower maybe, but you can make it look like whatever you want. You could make it look like an animal or the globe, planet Earth. You could have it be just a sign using recycled materials. It doesn't have to look like anything. Ideally, I probably would have used a bigger piece of cardboard so that you could see the words if you're driving on the street and my door is far away. But, you know, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using something smaller here. So first I'm going to write on it my message. Please stop idling your car. And then I'm going to use my other material to kind of decorate around it and make it look like a flower to celebrate the earth. Please. Please do not idle your car. And then I'm going to write thank you, because that always helps, right? It helps if we are kind. If I had more time, I would maybe go over the letters a little more, make them stand out more. So this is just the very base of my sign, and this is on cardboard that I just had in my little art bin, right? Now, I was thinking that I could cut out each of these little pieces. Ooh, it is windy, huh? Each of these little pieces of the egg curtain, and maybe later today I'll go and I'll paint on them and make them um, different colors, look like flower petals, or I'll use a marker. You can keep them plain. Whatever works for you, whatever you have laying around your home. I love these egg curtains because we can use them to plant seeds like we talked about yesterday. And we can also use them for this art project. All right, so from here, I'm going to cut them in half so they look like individual little flower petals. What kind of flowers do you see growing outside right now, anyone who's watching? Um, down there by my car, we've got some uh, Frisithia, that bush with the yellow flowers. Across the street, we've got, um, I think that's probably a plum or a cherry tree with pink flowers. My neighbor's house. Oh, Meg says at her house she has azaleas. What color are they? Purplish pink. So pretty. I love azaleas. And she has forsythia. <laughs> I remember that from Meg's video yesterday. She said, when she was little, she used to call Frisithi the octopus plant because its branches go in all different directions. I agree. Um, all right, so we've got these little egg carton pieces, and don't they kind of look like they have little flower petals? So this, our sign is going to be surrounded by lots of tiny little flowers, but if I did the whole thing, if I had more time, it would also kind of look like the cardboard part is the center of the flower, right, where the pollen is, and then these are little petals. And I could add tons of other things, right? I could cut out um, some of this cool paper that I saved, and I could turn that into a petal that goes, a bigger one that goes behind the little one. I'm going to keep going over here. So I like to use hot glue sometimes um, when I'm making crafts. It looks like this, a hot glue gun. This is really only safe for adults to use or for maybe older kids to use with an adult watching them. Um, it gets really hot and you can burn yourself if you touch the metal part. So um, I'm only going to be holding the plastic part here. 
I decided to use hot glue um, because I didn't have any regular glue, and I didn't know, I did have tape, but I didn't know if that would work so well. It's also probably not as good for the environment. That's okay, especially, you know, during these, these um, quarantine times when we're all staying at home, we just gotta use the, make the most of what we have, right? And use what, we, what we've got. So I'm gonna use my hot glue gun here to start gluing my flower petals on. I'm so excited to paint these later. Oh, you're not gonna be able to see my thank you, that's okay, I can always fix it. So for folks who are watching, what are some other ideas of recycled materials that you could use to make art projects, um, especially art projects that can send a message out to the world about helping the environment? What are some other materials? Maybe it's something that you have or something that you've just thought of that you know other people might have. Leave us some comments, please. I probably should have written the words more in the middle, right? Because <laughs> the flower petals are kind of taking them over, but that's okay. All right, how are we doing for time here? I think we are right on track. So. Stay tuned. Maybe um, another day I'll post a picture of uh, how this turned out when I finished my project. This is what I have so far. Please don't idle your car. Thank you. And it's turning into a flower. So again, just to wrap it up, this is my example of how I can make a difference on the local level for people in my neighborhood that drive by. Um, you can also make a difference on the personal level, in your own household, on the local level, in your neighborhood, or in your state, and on the global level. You can write letters, you can sign petitions, you can become a politician yourself if you wanted to, or you could volunteer or donate money when you grow up to organizations that are doing awesome work. All right, um, I'm gonna pause for any final questions or comments before we wrap it up here on this 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Nice. Meg is telling me that some people are commenting about ways that they reuse materials. Go ahead, Meg. Ah. Oh. Nice. So some examples people are telling us are um, using scraps of wood for projects. So um, instead of going out to a store like Home Depot and buying wood to build something or to make, you know, like a small project in your house, using scraps of wood that they already have, that is awesome. Um, and the other one was reusable bags. That's a good one. So um, the plastic bags that you used to get at the grocery store, or in some, some cities you still do, a lot of cities have been banning those. They're saying no more plastic bags. You have to either bring your own bags or um, the grocery store or whatever store is going to give you paper bags, but you have to pay um, a little bit for them. So in Boston, I think it was 10 cents that you had to pay, maybe 5 cents for a paper bag. However, because of coronavirus, I don't think they're charging for those anymore. But that's a different story. Awesome example, all about... Um, reusable bags when you go shopping. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, this video will be um, is being recorded and will stay up on our Facebook page. So please continue to comment and add your questions or your ideas for how you can help planet Earth today, but not just today, every day throughout the whole year. Happy Earth Day, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me. See you later.